In the Kalahari Desert flatlands, 40 kilometers southwest of the Okavango River erupts the Kwazat Rock Formation of the Zodilo Hills. The hills reveal Botswana's cultural and spiritual heritage and carry an aura of mystery and intrigue. The Dilo Hills are believed to have been inhabited by people for the past 100,000 years. Wow! A unique feature of the hills is rock painting of the sand and some Bantu people groups. The San are the oldest modern-day inhabitants of the hills followed by the Hambukushi for the past 200 years. Most of the paintings are attributed to the San people or Basara as they are locally called. They sought refuge in the hills to escape the harshness of the desert. The villages of the San and Hambukushu are located near the Zodilo Hills. The San were hunter-gatherers that occasionally owned sheep and cattle. Some San groups used spears and others bows and arrows for hunting and ate fish. The Hambukushu were metal workers who kept animals, hunted, fished, collected wild food and grew crops. Hello everyone, welcome to Africa Revealed. In this video, we shall visit the Zodilo Hills. Now there are four hills altogether, with three in proximity and a distant fourth hill. The San people believe that the hills are a family. The biggest hill is the male and is about 410 meters high. The female is about 300 meters high and the child which is 2 kilometers away is 40 meters high. The fourth hill is believed to be the first wife who was left by the male for a younger wife. Oh no. And watches from a distance seeking revenge. Ooh. The Sen hold the hills as sacred grounds and believe that the spirits of their ancestors rest there. They also believe their gods still live within the female hill where they control the world. Their most holy place is found under the summit of the male hill and legend says it is where the first spirit prayed. In times past, they would go up the hills to offer prayer and ask for rain. Hunting and killings in the vicinity are prohibited as the San believe this will bring you misfortune. Many legends are told of those who defied this and brought all sorts of misfortune upon themselves. The Hambukushu hold the place as holy and sacred also, and their god Nyambe dwells there. They mark the hills as the place where the first humans and animals were released from heaven. Evidence of animal prints on the rocks supports this legend. Archaeologists have found evidence of human habitation dating back to about 100,000 years ago. Flake stone points used for arrow tips dating back more than 50,000 years reveal Middle Stone Age people lived in the area. Some of the artifacts include fish bones that give testimony to freshwater fishing that was prevalent in southern Africa. To the west of Tsudilo Hills is a dry fossil lake bed showing that life in the area used to be an oasis. The fish bones dated more than 30,000 years ago. Catfish and bream were caught using harpoons or spears and carved bone points. This suggests the use of poison arrows and light bows very early in the later Stone Age period. There's also evidence of wetland animals that were hunted in the dried up lake but are no longer found in Zodilo. The Paleo Lake is believed to occasionally border the hills from 12,000 to 1,900 years and 22,000 to 27,000 years ago. An early Iron Age site called Divuyu dates back to between 700 AD to 900 AD. It shows that Bantu people have been in the hills for thousands of years. These were cattle farmers who came from Central Africa. They traded specular rides and fur in exchange for Asian glass beads, Congolese jewelry and Atlantic Ocean seashells. Many of these items came from distant lands. 
specular rod is an iron oxide that was used as a decorative cosmetic. It was ground and mixed with grease and then applied to the body and hair. This left the wearer looking like they had put on glitter. Wow! It was hard to remove from its surface and acted much like that glitter common day to day. There are about 20 prehistoric mines in Todilo of which specular rat was the main thing mined. There's also a mica mine and crystal quartz in some places. Mining was done by breaking the bedrock with fire and hammer stones. The broken rock was left outside the mines or in abandoned chambers. It was only after the arrival of the metalworking farmers of the Bantu people that mining activity in the hills intensified. The mining activity seems to have lasted till about 1150 AD when the occupation of the hills lessened. The Tzodila rock paintings are the most prominent feature of the hills, with over 4,000 paintings that represent human habitation for thousands of years. They were first known to the outside world in 1898 and were legally protected for the first time in 1930. The prohibitions of the law included illegal excavations and taking or damaging of relics. However, the hills, their wildlife, the plants didn't get much protection. In 1978, Botswana began research into the area through National Museum. This covered recordings of all paintings, excavation sites, early human settlements, archaeological finds, and beliefs of the people in nearby villages. The paintings are mostly found around the female hill. 600 painting sites have been identified and 51% show animals, 35% geometric shapes, 12% humans, and 2% handprints. Some of the paintings are in red and attributed to the San, while some are in white, believed to have been done by the Bantu speakers. The red paintings are mostly on rock faces that are in the open and exposed to the elements and are believed to be the oldest dating as far back as the first millennia. Most white paintings are in caves or sheltered areas. Many of the animals in the paintings were also found in excavations by archaeologists. Some of the sites are believed to have been used in the worship practices of the people and their paintings depict worship rituals. Others give light to the life of people, what they encountered and the animals around them. In 2002, Zodilo Hills was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The government opened a museum at the base of the hills that tells the story of Tsodilo. Local communities of the San and Hambukushu people run a campsite at the entrance of the hills. The campsite provides clean facilities for campers and guided tours and of course a fee is collected from visitors. To preserve the area, free exploration is discouraged and tour guides from the local community are always available to show people the most famous sites. They will also share the rich history of their people and the Zodilo Hills, of course. There are walking trails available and these include the Lion Trail, the Cliff Trail and the Rhino Trail. As their name suggests, the trails lead to a feature of the hill or paintings mentioned. The rhino trail leads to a cave marked by a painting of a rhino on the north side of the female hill. The cave is where many prehistoric stone materials including charcoal were found and they date back to the Middle Stone Age, later Stone Age and the Iron Age. You will need a couple of days to explore all the sites and enjoy the rich history of the place. People like to reach the summit of the male which is one of the highest points in Botswana. From there, you get a wonderful view of the land. The San believe this is where the first spirit knelt and prayed after creating humans. You will see impressions on the rock, 
where the spirit is believed to have knelt. Now the best time to visit is during or close to the winter and spring seasons of Botswana between April and October. The campsite, however, is open all year round, but temperatures are more bearable in the winter, especially if you're going to be hiking. Many prefer to avoid the scorching heat of the summer sun from November to March. But after it rains, the sandy soil is easier to navigate as the sand will be compacted. The seclusion of Tsudilo Hills means there isn't much to see in terms of animal life. There is, however, a rare find. The Tsudilo Gecko is unique to the area and has yellow and brown streaks marking it. The small nocturnal lizard is fast and one should keep a lookout for it while visiting. Other wildlife in Tsudilo Hills include Steenbok, Diker and Kudu. Leopard prints are often seen in the hills, though sightings of the leopards themselves are very rare. Bird watchers can catch sightings of the red-billed hornbills, melba and grey lorries. So, are you wondering how to get there? Tsudilo is reachable from the Todd Road linking Maung and Shakawi. It is about 40 kilometers from Shakawi and the hills are accessed by a dirt road that can get very sandy in some places. So you will need a 4x4 to navigate the sandy parts. The turn from the Todd Road is marked with a sign from the National Museum. Shakawe is also a good option for a stay if one doesn't want to camp at the camping site provided in the hills. But you will have to make do with the stretch of the dirt road to reach the Dilo Hills. Accommodation varies from guest houses to safari lodges that often include packages that offer guided tours of Zodilo Hills. The Zodilo Hills are mystic, with a rich history buried within them. Spend time exploring them to learn about the ways of the prehistoric people. It is believed that all humanity originates from the hunter-gatherer communities of Southern Africa. Tsudilo sheds light on their lives and beliefs. For anyone visiting, Tsudilo's majesty and sacredness draws them into the story of the oldest people, the Sen. Thank you for watching another Africa Revealed video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment. Let us know what visiting Zodilo Hills has been like for you.